What is going on, everybody? It is your boy, John from the Gamer Duo here, welcoming you to the final episode of Chapter 2 of Danganronpa. Last episode took a bit of a turn, but we gathered all of the information needed to head into the second class trial. The beauty of class trials is um, this thing called they are voice acted. So it gives me the primo time to think about who did the murder. I still am leaning on the, like, eyes of Toko. Ahem. So, is everybody ready to what? Am I blind or are we missing someone? Yo. Yo, yeah, Toko's not here. Huh? And Toko is... You really don't remember? Come on. Kidding. I'm just kidding. How could I forget about that little nut job? She's a critical part of this class trial. Oh my god. You're throwing me off even more, Monokuma. You wouldn't outright say who the killer was, would you? I don't think you would. Ugh. What are you gonna do? Okie dokie. I'll go ahead and drag her out of here, kicking and screaming. Just one moment, please. And just like that, a few minutes later, he reappeared, dragging Toko behind him. I had to told him I didn't want to, but he forced me. I can't believe you would drag a girl around. Yeah. Terrible! You're t -t terrible! Yeah. <sighs> so now everyone's here, right? Okay then, hustle to the elevator and let's get this show on the road. <laughs> I'll see you guys down there. Let's go. So, shall we get going? It's time to find out who killed Chihiro. Chihiro. Chihiro Fujisaki. She was so gentle, so calm, and meek. Nobody had problems with her. Someone made a choice to kill a girl like that. And the murderer is one of us. Someone standing right here. Hey, come on. Fucking Toko, man. What's got her so worked up? Can I just go to the back? I probably can, but... I don't know why the killer did that, but... I'm sure it'll work itself out. Justice always prevails, right, bro? I don't need to talk to you two. Nor you. I'm satisfied. Alright, let's talk to Celeste, actually, and then I'll be satisfied. There's something odd about Toko's behavior. I don't think it's mere shock. I don't think mere shock is enough to explain it. I know, but you guys are all talking about Toko. No, I already... It's true. Oh, whoa, yes. I gave a small nod in reply. With one last deep breath, I walked toward the elevator shaky, with shaky legs. With each step forward, I could feel my heart starting to race faster and faster. As soon as everybody was on, the elevator began to descend. And I couldn't handle my emotions. I couldn't stop speculating. The steel box sank with heavy clunking sounds of despair deeper into the ground. As we went deeper, the uneasiness in my heart grew bigger and bigger. The elevator was unaffected, however, and continued to descend without hesitation, until finally, it came to a sudden stop. <laughs> what do you think? I redecorated it! Isn't it so fresh? Isn't it so exciting? Don't waste our time with this stupid questions. Let's get this over with. Damn. Good, good. You're rip rearing to go. Gotta say, I don't hate it. Not at all. Well. Okay, then. Let's get this show on the road. Everyone, please find your assigned seats. And so, the curtain opened once again. A deadly judgment. A deadly deception. A deadly betrayal. A deadly riddle. A deadly defense. A deadly fate. A deadly class trial. Oh, okay. Increases the influence. Oh, okay. Attentive influence. Increases the influence gauge by two. Effective during the trial. Costs two SP. Increases bullet capacity. Effective during the bullet time battle. Costs four SP. Increases the damage to the opponent when 
the statement is destroyed. Effective during the bullet time battle. Oh, I see. Okay, so I have 12 S or 12 SP to like utilize. And the four that I've collected are worth 11. Cool. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Okay then. So, first off, let's talk about the murder weapon. Yes, the 65 pound dumbbell. First, we have to make it clear what was used to deliver the fatal blow. Make your argument. Chihiro's fatal injury. It appears it was a head wound. According to the it was. Profile, the killer used a blunt instrument. What kind of blunt instrument could it have been? I was wrong. Oh, crap. Chihiro's fatal injury. It appears it was a head wound. No, 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 no. Don't shoot that. The killer used a blunt instrument. But what kind of Blunt instrument could it have been? I bet it was an iron pipe. Oh. Interesting. That certainly would make for a powerful weapon. Poor Chihiro. What I have to realize here is that if Hero says something, it's most likely the thing. It's most likely the thing I gotta shoot. <laughs> Whoopsies! According to the Monokuma file, the killer used a blunt instrument but what kind of that's my rule because it, it is a blunt instrument it was, an iron pipe. it was not an iron pipe it was the dumbbell got it okay that took me way too long can we agree that the object that dealt the fatal blow was the dumbbell found at the scene of the crime it was covered in blood and there was nothing else at the scene that could have caused that kind of injury and the wound on the victim's head is consistent with the shape of the dumbbell. As far as I'm concerned, there's no mistake and no room for doubt on this one. You looked at her head wound? Yay! That's so creepy! If you don't mind, I will proceed from here. Let's move on to discussion of the culprit. Although, I believe the criminal behind this heinous act is already quite clear. I'm pretty sure of it too, but last time we were sure of it, we all were sure it was me. So, don't necessarily know if I trust y'all's judgment. What? For real? Chihiro's killer is the fiendish serial killer, Genocide Jack. Genocide Jack, the fiendish serial killer. Did he really kill Chihiro? A new element has been added to nonstop debates. Would you like to hear more? Absolutely. For this debate, lines of white noise will appear to disrupt your reactions. Oh, frick a doodle. The truth bullets will disappear if they hit these lines. So think of them as obstacles in your debate. But there's a way to keep white noise from getting in your way. Press the A button to attach the silencer, which you can shoot down with the white noise. Or, However... If you shoot an actual remark with your silencer instead of the white noise, the time limit will decrease. So take careful aim when you have your silencer out. But, oh, but, if your action difficulty is set to gentle, white noise won't appear at all. Well, oh, okay, uh, this is where the action difficulty sentence says, okay, it's not gentle. 
In which case, you can forget about the silence or just focus on the situation in front of you. Well then, good luck and have fun. Okay. Make our arguments. I highly doubt the dumbbell is going to come up again. The culprit is Genocide Jack. I'm sure of it. Case closed, as far as I'm concerned. But that's impossible. Why? What makes it impossible? Well, I mean, come on. There's just no proof for it. No, that's wrong. I might know one reason he could be involved. What? I found this file while I was looking around the archive in the library. I guess it's some kind of confidential file the police put together about the Genocide Jack case. What? That's kind of weird as shit, isn't it? What was something like that doing in the library? The why of it is probably more trouble than it's worth. So let's forget about that for now. More importantly, it outlines all the specifics of every Genocide Jack case in exceeding detail. According to the file, there appear to be two defining characteristics in every Genocide Jack case. The first is that a bloody message is found written at the scene of every murder. Oh, that's right. Food lust. What? No. You can die for that comment. But also that clears you. It's actually blood lust. But more important is the other characteristic. And it's something that has never been made public. Never made public? What the hell is it? Why don't you tell them, Makoto? The other characteristic of every Genocide Jack case. A gun! Apparently, in every Genocide Jack case, the killer suspends the body in a certain way. Other than the killer, the only people who know about this are the higher-ups in the police department. However, Chihiro was most definitely suspended in the same way. So, how did the culprit know about this when only high-level police officials were aware of it? There's only one logical answer I can think of. It's because the culprit in this case is the real Genocide Jack. No fucking way! You're saying Genocide Jack is one of us? Yes. In fact, it's Toko. What? Genocide Jack's true identity is Toko Fukawa. You lie! Wh what? Hey, okay, wait, hold on a sec. Toko has, like, bloodophobia or whatever, remember? What kind of serial killer is afraid of blood? The one who wouldn't want to feel or wouldn't want to seem like they're a serial killer. Is Toko Genocide Jack? The answer is yes and no. Another riddle. Man, why is this going to be so complicated? It does seem like a riddle in a way, but I feel like I can just about see it. Genocide Jack is Toko, but isn't Toko. What does that mean? The DID thing. Oh. Hangman's Gambit. Okay. Please don't tell me I have to spell it to... Oh, God. Oh, for it. Uh... Okay. Shoot. Uh... Sh uh... No. Ah! No! Is it because Genocide Jack has a split personality? Huh? I think I read that somewhere in the file, too. They thought that the suspect might have... What did they call it? Dissociative Identity Disorder. Oh, okay. But still, 
someone say that about Mizukawa is... Perfectly acceptable. Toko's strange behavior after seeing the body is proof enough that she has a split personality. The one thing that shows Toko has a split personality has to do with her behavior. I got it! You're talking about how she started acting totally different than usual, right? That's right. Think back. She fainted when she saw Chihiro's corpse, and then, when she woke up... Wow, is this a dead body? Hey, are you dead? <laughs> she must have had her head real hard when she fainted. This world has a front and back, top and inning, end and bottom, and a sea of truth and a web of lies. This is quite concerning. I mean, she sounds completely different. She was acting funny, that's for sure. That melancholy tone of hers completely disappeared. Don't go assigning adjectives to my tone without permission. Not to mention, once she regained consciousness and saw Chihiro's body again, she was utterly calm. In other words, within her is one personality that can't handle blood, and one that obviously can't. <laughs> so when Toko trapped herself in her room, it's because she was scared of Genocide Jack? I won't let Genocide Jack have control. I will d d drive out the killer, d d drive out the murderous fiend. The reason she locked herself in her room wasn't to keep other people from getting in. It was to keep her other personality from getting out. What? Toko was afraid. Afraid of the murderous fiend inside of her. Of killing even more people. Uh, how? Yeah. How can you know all this? I do believe you misunderstood her. What she's trying to say isn't, how can you know all this? No. What she wants to know is, how could you tell them? Huh? Last night, just before Monokuma gave his motive speech, Toko and I had a strange conversation. She told me a most interesting story. She said, a murderous fiend lived within her and she was afraid it could appear and attack at any time. And that trepidation is what's caused her to have such a bleak attitude. Isn't that right, Toko? <laughs> this is all a lie. Right, Toko? You said you wouldn't tell anyone. What? You promised? I can't believe you lied! You have only yourself to blame. You came to me with your tragic little story. I didn't ask you to. This <laughs> is the real world, not some romantic fantasy fairy tale. <laughs> Betrayal. We love to see it. Besides, you broke your promise first. You said that as long as you were here, no matter what, you wouldn't let Genocide Jack kill anyone. But in spite of that promise... I'm so sorry. I couldn't keep our promise. But don't worry. Never again. I, I won't let Genocide Jack have control ever again. You said if I kept my promise... Go out with me. That's the only reason I promised. How many times do I have to tell you? I never said that, but you weren't able to do it. You just couldn't resist that rush you got from killing, could you? I, I tried. I swear I tried to control it. But, but your efforts were useless. What a disappointment. <laughs> I hate you. Well, the opening act is nearly finished. All that's left is to hear from the person in question directly. The person? You don't mean... Togo's body suddenly lunged backwards, and a huge thud echoed across the gold room. But in the next second... Whoa! Is it me you were 
hoping to see. Well, oh, oh, genocide jail. I thought it was genocide. What? What the heck? So you figured it out, huh? Well, whatever. What are you gonna do? I'm the ultimate murderous fiend, genocide Jack. Or better yet, let's go with genocide Jill. What the fuck is this? Toko, what happened to you? Not Toko. That's a loser name. And what happened is a textbook split personality. But what if one of them happens to be a serial killer? You should turn a blind eye to one's faults. She's so intense. Like they say, sound and murderous mind, sound and murderous body. This one is so different from the one we've come to know. Yes, well, the world is composed of a front and a back, you know. Just like how every inning has a top and a bottom, or how in the depths of every truth lives a little lie. Behind every dark and gloomy soul lives another that shines as bright as the sun! <laughs> this is the murderous fiend, Genocide Jack. This is... This is... This is beyond um, insane. Miss Jack, uh, uh, Jill, can I ask you a question? What's up? Some of us think you might be the mastermind behind our entire situation. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'll tell you. I am the mastermind of all masterminds. Just kidding. Then it's not true? Of course it's not true. How dare you try to link me to that creepazole? And another thing, the police and government and society in the outside world are totally powerless. I mean, they just let this idiotic bloodthirsty maniac go buck wild all over town. Sure, I'm a bloodthirsty maniac, but life is pain, right? To live is to hurt other people. It's a necessary evil if you want to survive. The act of living itself causes pain for everyone. Just kidding again! <laughs> this should be enough to convince you. This murderous fiend is responsible for Chihiro's death. There's clearly a motive, so there should be no doubt. A motive? Remember what Monokuma told us? If someone didn't murder and graduate within 24 hours, an embarrassing memory or secret would be revealed. Well, let's assume that Toko's secret was about Genocide Jack. If a secret like that came to light, Toko's life would have undoubtedly been forever ruined. So she had a very clear motive to never have that side of herself exposed. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. Sorry, as much as I hate to admit it, I'm not the culprit. Huh? But I cannot imagine anyone other than you could murder someone in such a bizarre fashion. Maybe so, maybe so, but nevertheless, it's the truth. Do you really expect any of us to believe you? Yeah, I could never believe a word you say, you monster. Maybe. Maybe she's totally right about that, but... There's something still bothering me. What she said. I need to get more details about all of this. Oh boy. Status of the body, disappearing stain, or li library desk lamp. Sorry, but I didn't kill anyone. You say that, but do you really expect any of us to believe it? Perhaps if you had an alibi, that would change things. Oh, an alibi, huh? Now we're talking. When you compare your past murders to this incident, the modus operandi matches completely. What more proof do we need? <laughs> Give it up. You killed her. What? Sorry, but I didn't kill anyone. You say that, but do you really expect any of us to believe it? Perhaps if you had an alibi, that would change things. Oh, an alibi, huh? Now we're talking. When you compare your past murders to this incident, 
the modus operandi matches completely. No, that's wrong. Buying. He's wrong. Okay. Are the methods of murder really exactly the same? I'm not so sure about that. I think there's a slight difference between the genocide jack cases and this one. Huh? How's it any different? Uh oh, you don't know? Well then, human garbage, let me tell you! I murder with passion and conviction. I consider myself a professional, and I have a very particular way of doing things. Imagine you go to a fancy Italian restaurant. They're very picky about the noodles, the sauce, everything. But what happened to Chihiro? It'd be like if that same Italian restaurant started using ragu or Chef Boyardee. This is no creation of mine. Let me rephrase that in a way that maybe makes more sense. There are two clear differences between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. Got it. For one, the cause of death is different. In the Genocide Jack murders, all the victims were killed the same way. According to the case file, they were all apparently killed with a pair of scissors. But Chihiro died from a blow to the head, right? Ah, uh, yes. That is remarkably different from the other murders. Wouldn't it be strange for someone who kills the same way without fail to suddenly change their method? And there's more. One more conflicting detail. That's right! In my recipe of murder, if the bloody message is the tortellini, then the arrangement of the body would be the pesto sauce! Could you please stop comparing killing people to cooking? So, are you saying the other difference has to do with how the body was arranged? Remember what the killer used to suspend her? They used some kind of rope to hang her up by her wrists. What is your point? Well, in all the previous Genocide Jack cases, something else was used to suspend them. Specifically, pairs of razor sharp scissors. And guess what? I used my own specially designed scissors for the murders and the arrangement. Like I said, I'm a professional, so naturally I'm very picky about the tools I use. And, 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 and you know what else? Big Mac said there's two differences, but he's wrong. Big Mac? Are you referring to me? <laughs> <laughs> Listen up, Big Mac. There's actually one more difference. Huh? My word, you really didn't notice? Take a look at who the victims were in each genocide jack case. There's a pattern there just waiting to be discovered. Are they all men? Pattern. Figure that out, and it'll be plain as that why I couldn't have possibly killed that little lolly girl. Hmm, let's see. Pattern started as genocide jack victims, and Shihiro didn't fit. I think I figured it out. Yeah, they were all men. Chihiro was a girl? Bingo, bullseye, right on the money! What are you talking about? In all the Genocide Jack cases, all the victims had something in common. They were all... guys? That's right! The people I kill with such passion and conviction are all adorable little... <sighs> The hell is wrong with you? I can't help it. I'm just a full throttle boy on boy fan girl, and the mopey side of me just hates it. <laughs> Didn't well, that was that was called out a few like hours ago in gameplay time. That like how could you be this? You 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 probably this kind of person, and she flat out denied it. So since Chihiro was a girl and not an adorable little man, you wouldn't kill her? 
Would an Italian chef suddenly start making ramen just because they're both noodles? Don't be stupid. I have too much passion and conviction to cross that line. That's the absolute reality of the one and only. We get it. You've clearly explained your hobby and your philosophy. But that's not all there is to it. It's a different matter entirely when you're forced to kill in order to survive. Quiet, lowly cur! Lowly cur? I would never kill for a reason as petty as mere survival. And if by some fluke I did kill to survive, why would I bother with the message and arrangement? It'd make me the obvious suspect! That does make some amount of sense. Whatever reason I have for killing, I would never leave out my prized scissors! Who would go out of their way to use a big, stupid, heavy dumbbell? Maybe you used the dumbbell because you couldn't find any scissors in the school? Any scissors? I don't just use any scissors! I only use my own set of pride class and me of the entire world scissors! Okay, whatever. There still aren't any in the school. Are you sure about that? Da, 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 da! <laughs> she has some. She's fully equipped. That's right. So I can kill anywhere, anytime. Why would I resort to dumbbells or rope when I have my trusty scissors by my side? Go ahead. Tell me I'm wrong. You can't, can you? Gutter dogs, all of you. Not to mention, I have no clue how to tie a good knot. <laughs> that rope's totally out of the question anyway. <laughs> I had no idea what's going on anymore. Could such a heinous villain really be innocent? But the body really was suspended, right? And nobody but the police knew about that. Yeah. That's why we figured it had to be the real deal and not some copycat killer or whatever. Hold on. There actually is one person. One person that could have copied the Genocide Jack cases. Here's my answer. Yakuya, it's possible you could have found out, isn't it? You'd have no problem gaining access to classified government documents or internal police records. Plus, you've already looked through the Genocide Jack file before this all happened, hadn't you? Are you saying Mr. Togami did it? Then, the reason he pushed the theory of Genocide Jack being the killer so hard was because he wanted to pin the crime on her. So, he rearranged the scene to disguise it and make it look like I put my stamp on it! The adorable glasses man was behind it all? Oh, I'm on fire! Well, Biakia, what's your response? I don't think he did it. I genuinely don't, I but... See. So now the suspicion falls on me. Then I must ask, when would you say I began acting suspicious? Surely you must have an answer. Hmm. Looking back and thinking about it now... The way you were acting right before we discovered the body was a little strange. And the locker rooms. They're suspicious. Very suspicious indeed. Wouldn't you agree? Huh, suspicious. It seems like nobody searched the locker rooms. Let's start with the girls' locker room. You wanted to go to the girls' locker room right away, right? But since you're a guy... I should have naturally thought of the boys' locker room first. Is that what you want to say? The victim was Chihiro, a girl. Hence why I said we should check the girls' locker room. Nothing strange about that, I'd say. On the contrary, there's something very strange. Okay, then. What's so strange about it? Go ahead. Share with the rest of the class. Well, there was a clear contradiction in what Bayakuya Bayak just said. I need to make it clear to everyone. A new element has been added to non-stop debates. Would you like to hear? Next, we're going to add something called a truth flashback. If you aim at a weak spot, hold down and hold the Y button, down the Y button. Then you'll memorize that weak spot. This memorized phrase can only be shot at once 
as a single this memorized phrase can only be shot at once as a single truth bullet if you shoot or change the truth bullet, it'll disappear from your truth cylinder. However, you can use these flashback features as many times as you want. If you don't seem to have the answer to a lie or contradiction in your loaded truth bullet, it might be wise to memorize different weak spots, and you can use that to make your case. When it's the best time to flashback, well, you'll have to keep you, use your keen wits, won't you? In this case, though, I will say, if you don't use a flashback, you won't be refuting anything. Well then, good luck and have fun. The second Monokuma file. So, you said Byakuya was acting kind of weird before we found the body. But he was acting weird... how? If you're presented with the opportunity to check out the girl's locker room, you absolutely take it! That's a natural reaction for any guy! The victim was Chihiro, who was a girl. So, of course, I would suggest we check the girl's locker room first. There was no time for pointless distraction. What's so strange about that? I wish you'd take me with you. Hearing Bakira's comment about Chihiro being a girl, I realized there was a clear, clear contradiction there. I need to make that contradiction clear. So, you said Byakuya was acting kind of weird before we found the body. No. Shoot! So, you said Byakuya was acting kind of weird before we found the body. But he was acting weird... How? If you're presented with the opportunity to check out the girls' locker room, you absolutely take it! That's a natural reaction for any guy! The victim was Chihiro. No, that's wrong! I'll tell you what's so strange about that. Because up until we actually discovered the body, we couldn't have known who the victim was. So your claim that you went to the girls' locker room first because Chihiro was the victim doesn't hold up. I see. That's a good answer, I must admit. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. But your reasoning is still too weak. Huh? What's wrong? Is that it? Surely you've got more than that. Go ahead. Show us. What's with Baya Bayakuya's attitude? It's like he doesn't even care. I've got him cornered, but he's acting like nothing. This has nothing to do with him. You're not finished already, are you? There must be more to it. There is. I think there is more to it. Think about it. We just talked about the differences between this case and past genocide Jack incidents. The proof you're looking for is hidden in there. Oh. Proof that I'm the culprit, you mean? The difference between the this case and the other genocide Jack murders. The evidence proves Bayaka is responsible. That pr proves Bayakuya is responsible is hidden there. What or what could it be? suspended with it was some kind of rope was it not that's right it absolutely was then there must be something very fishy indeed about that rope hey byakuya where'd you get it from huh i'd never seen that rope before in my life ah Probably somebody else must have had it hidden away somewhere hey byakuya where'd you get it from huh I'd never seen that rope before in my life. No! Oh, frick. Obviously somebody else must have had it hidden away somewhere. 
I'd never seen that rope before in my life. No! Obviously somebody Oh my the noise. I know which one it is. There! Actually, I'm pretty sure you have seen it before. Because you see that rope? Or should I say, that extension cord? What? An extension cord? Yakuna, you've used the extension cord in the library more than once, haven't you? And the same extension cord that was in the library all this time? Went missing after the murder. And there's no way someone who uses that extension cord as much as you do wouldn't discover that fact. And Byakuya must be the one who took the extension cord. I can't imagine any other possibility. If that's really what you think, then your conclusion is something like this. I killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, then hung her up and wrote that bloody message. I intentionally made it look like Genocide Jack was behind it. Is that about right? He's doing it again. He's totally calm and unconcerned, as if he's not involved. Wait, not even involved. What's wrong? I asked you if you think that's what happened. Hell yes, that's what happened. So that's it, right? Byaki is the killer. I don't disagree with not disagreeing. He kept calling this a game, right? So he'd be totally willing to do something like this to win. Um, sorry, but could we hold on just a second? I... I think we need to talk about this a little more. Huh? Do we really need to? We've already decided who did it. I know, but still, there's something that's still bothering me. Is that right? And what, pray tell, is still bothering you? I killed her in the girls' locker room, then disguised my crime. Specifically, I dressed it up to make it look like it was the work of a homicidal psychopath. What about all that bothers you? Wait. What was that just now? Something's not right. Bayako has marked it now. There's something that concerns me. I got it! You say you killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, right? But are you sure about that? Isn't it possible that the murder took place somewhere else? How disappointing. What kind of question is that? Even in the world of disappointments, this is a true letdown. She was found dead in the girls' locker room. There is absolutely no question about that. How could the scene of the crime have been anywhere else? Well, I think it's entirely possible that she was killed somewhere else, then carried there later, along with the rest of the murder scene. The rest of the murder scene? That was awfully specific. Please tell me you have a reason for saying all of that. I believe I do. Did you just... Did I just take you off guard? When the story suddenly moved to the crime scene, Bayaki... Bayaki... Uh, who had been competent up till now, maybe ne he never realized... That the actual scene of the crime could have been somewhere else. Don't just move on without permission. Come on, Makoto. If there's any chance the murder took place somewhere else, let's see the proof. Evidence that shows the murder took place somewhere else. I need to just focus on the things I got. Proof that she was killed somewhere else is the poster that's hanging in each locker room. Your proof is some posters? The poster in the girls' locker room was a picture of a big boobed supermodel. But don't you think that's kind of strange? Why would the girls' locker room have a poster like that? I bet those massive jugs of hers were totally fake! <laughs> Meanwhile, the boys' locker room had a poster of the super popular boy band Tornado. Again, that doesn't really seem to belong in a boy's locker room. So you're saying that maybe the posters were switched? 
And there's one other thing I noticed about the locker room. You know what I'm talking about. You're referring to my protein coffee, aren't you? Protein coffee? While I was in the girls' locker room earlier, I spilled some protein coffee on the carpet. But I noticed that after the murder, the stain had been totally scrubbed away. It's not that the stain was scrubbed away. It was moved. I got it! The stain on the girls' locker room carpet wasn't scrubbed away. In fact, I found it on the boys' locker room carpet. That's definitely the stain from my protein coffee. Then, does that mean that the carpet was switched too? But why would anyone do that? To move the murder scene from one locker room to the other. It's certainly plausible, don't you think? What? In other words, in order to completely swap the scene of the crime, the blood-stained poster and carpet were moved along with the dead body. By doing this, the killer was able to change the entire room where the murder took place. I can certainly follow your reasoning, but why would the culprit bother doing that? Huh? Why would they go through all that trouble of switching the scene of the crime? Actually, an even bigger question. If the murder did take place in the boys' locker room, then how did Chihiro get in the boys' locker room in the first place? Ah. To get into the locker rooms, you have to swipe your e-handbook across the card reader device. But Chihiro's handbook should have only allowed her access to the girls' locker room. She had no way to get into the boys' locker room to begin with. No, she did have a way, and I can tell you what it was. I highly doubt that. Shut up! I'm telling you, I know how she could have done it. Is he right? Could Jihiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? Is it really possible? Could Chihiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? Ah! I've got it! She must have hacked her e-handbook! She was the ultimate programmer, after all. I'm sure that would have been no problem for her. No, I don't think that's it. She used the thing that was in the main hall. Huh? What thing? I'm talking about Leon's handbook, of course. No, that's wrong! No, I don't think Chihiro used Leon's handbook. Why not? Because Leon's handbook was broken. Oh. Well, then, yeah, I guess that'd be pretty impossible, huh? I am struck silent by how quickly you gave up. Plus, isn't there a regulation against using someone else's handbook? Actually, the rule states that loaning your handbook is prohibited. It says nothing about borrowing one. In other words, you could borrow a dead person's handbook all you want, and you'd be safe. Yup, yup, yup! Hit the nail square on the noggin! Of course, if it were broken, that wouldn't make any sense anyway. So then, she must have hacked hers like I said. She used her ultimate programmer skills and... Psst. You can't fix an e-handbook! The instant you open one up, a security buzzer starts blaring! So, if she didn't use Leon's handbook, and she didn't modify her own handbook. Maybe Mr. Nayagi's initial assumption is just wrong. It seems like there's no way she could have got into the boys' locker room. So I guess so. Okay then, I vote for Byakuya. Is that it then? Chihiro was killed in the girls' locker room and Byakuya was the one who did it, really? But still, I don't know what Hold else I can do. Second. Thank you, uh... I agree with you though. I think you're on the right track. What the? You finally decide to open your mouth and that's what you've got to say? There's no way she could get in the boys' locker room, right? So why are you so sure she couldn't get in? There's still one other way she could have gained access. What? What are you talking about? What other way is there? Well, to explain that, why don't we take a little break from the trial? I'd like you all to come see something. Wait, 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 wait. 
Just what do you think you're doing? Don't worry. This will make the whole trial more exciting. I'm sure that thought must please you. Huh? It'll make things more exciting? Well, all right then. I declare an official class trial recess. Oh. Huh? For real? Now then, what is it you want to show us? It better not be boring or I'll be very unhappy. Oh, I have no doubt it'll meet your lofty expectations. So, shall we go? So before I even knew what was happening, the class trial had been put on hold. And that's where we're going to... Oh, wait. It's on auto. Get off auto. And that's where we're going to leave you guys off. Um, obviously, I'm going to continue. But, uh, yeah. So uh, have fun watching another episode to figure out what the heck happened. Because this is a 52-minute for you guys already. Love you all.